Hi. Um, so I am going to, I'm, I'm doing this Q&A video over again. Like, I had an actual video for it, um, where I was more put together than this, and there was better lighting, and, like, it was all great, but, like, I, uh, procrastinated on it, um, and never finished editing it, and then I, like, looked back at the comments, and there were more questions, so... I'm just going to record here, look at the camera, not the fuck, or look at the, the thing, not the screen of myself. I just love myself that much. No, I'm kidding. I, okay, but this thing is going to be completely unedited, no cuts, no anything, because I'm just like, I'm just so down to earth and cool and quirky. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna really try to not have the urge to edit this because I'm never gonna finish editing it because I know that like this, um, this video is gonna be long. So yeah, we're, we're gonna try to go through it quickly. Uh, relatively, because I'm not good at talking. Well, you know, there is that lyric in Photo ID that says, I can't speak, so I'll sing, because I'm better at singing than speaking, so... Anyway, uh, first question by Ravis. When you are writing a new song, what do you start with? Do you think of a melody first and write lyrics for it? Or do you write the lyrics first and compose the rhythm around them? Also, which song was your favorite to compose? Okay. So. It always shifts. I'm always starting with different things but what I do most often is write the lyrics without any melody or anything and then I come up with like a chord progression or like just chords for the song and then just try like strumming out the chords or playing on piano whatever I, I gestured over here even though you can't see it but I have a keyboard right here um so, but yeah, I, I just play the chords while I'm just kind of singing randomly the lyrics that I have over them, and then I decide whatever sounds best. So that's what I normally do, but I have done things like, like, produce a whole, like, instrumental, and then write words for it. I've done that before. Uh, one of those that I did was Good Things. Good Things is a song that I completely did the instrumental for and then just wrote the song around it. So, I don't know. It changes, but what I do most often is, yes, write all the lyrics and then do that. And then once I have, like, a general idea, sometimes I even just write the lyrics, come up with a chord progression, and then go into production start making the instrumental track for it and then the melody I just put it together because whatever sounds good with it I don't know so it always changes basically and then what song was mine to or what which song was my favorite to compose compose um I want to say the, what's coming to mind right now is nobody loves me as much as I love them because it's the second half is very fun and it was new to me like to have a trap beat in my song so 
that's new to me. And so that was just really fun. There's that song, there's like there's certain songs that I after I'm finished like fully finished making that like I get so excited about them like I just get up and like start dancing to them in my room because I'm just so excited like oh my god I made that that was one of those songs nobody loves me as, as much as I love them it's a mouthful but I didn't know what else to name it okay I'm sorry but anyway another one of those songs that I'm get super excited got super excited about after I finished it um was the last garden the last garden was such a bop but also so sad it was just it was so climactic like it was it's it's such a good it's such a good song <laughs> um and also fun fact um my album Lux was actually originally going to be called The Last Garden, but then I decided on Lux, but then I still kept a song called The Last Garden in it as a little homage or whatever. Um, and also another fun fact, this I did the same thing with my album 4AM Diary, where I was going to call it I was going to call it dying at 4 a.m. But I changed it to 4 a.m. diary, but I still kept a song called dying at 4 a.m. in the album as a little homage. Um, so that's like, a, that's a little interesting thing. Um, but yeah, some of my favorites to compose definitely, um, uh, nobody loves me as much as I love them. The last garden. Um, oh, you know, blood moon, blood moon was so fun. Um, because I, I've never before that I had never done any, um, any of that, like format shifting. It's like, it's the same thing that Taylor Swift does in her song, midnight rain. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just look up Midnight Rain by Taylor Swift, press play, and you'll know what I mean. And that effect is called a formant shifting because it doesn't change like the, the pitch, but it changes the sound of it, if that makes sense. Like the, like it, it basically controls like overtones, not to be too nerdy, actually. Um, not to be too nerdy about it, but, like, it changes the overtones, like, the tones beneath the surface of the, of the sound of your voice. Um, and so I did that for, um, the opening. And I also combined it with, like, vocal chops, where I basically, for the beginning and I think the end, too, of Blood Moon, I took the chorus the vocals of me singing the chorus and then I just chopped it chop chopped the fuck out of that um and then I moved them around and played uh mix and match I think is the word um I played mix and match with the sounds until I got something that sounded like cool but like also wasn't even words I don't know and it sounded cool so and I put it in the song but yeah that was that that was uh those were some new things for me um the last garden because I had never tried out that rock sound before I mean I'm not sure but it was a new thing for me in general and then nobody loves me as much as I love them because I never tried the trap sound before. And then, um, what was I just talking about? Blood Moon, because I never tried the format shifter and the vocal chops. Um, and let me tell you guys, my next album, it's gonna be a banger. I'm telling you, it's gonna be so much better than everything I already have put out. And, um, yeah, I'm excited and you should be too.
Um, also stream class of 2023, that is out because I'm class of 2023, if, if you didn't get that already. Um, but yeah, so next question, I took way too long answering that. Ow, allergies, apologies. What is your least favorite? Okay, sa this is Sour Bones who was featured on the cover of Class of 2023, the song, featured on the artwork. Anyway, uh, the least favorite, what is my least favorite and most favorite part of song making? What is the funny, funnest and boringest part of it? <laughs> the funnest and the boringest part of it. Um, probably the most annoying part of it, I would say, is getting everything to sound right. Um, because there's so many... God, before I started producing music, I had no idea that there was so many different settings and things that you need to adjust to make something sound good and there's just so many like and there's so many things that I've learned too like what a compressor is and uh EQ um god what else is there limiters uh something else I don't know um the fun, the most fun part is probably recording vocals, maybe. Um, cause like you get to actually like create like, cause whenever there's just an instrumental, like you don't, you still don't know what like the full sound is going to sound like. But once you record the vocals, it's like this song is like really coming together and it feels like a song. Like that's when it really... That's when it hits you, when it feels like a song, I guess. The most boring part um, is the same as the annoying part of messing around with the effects and, like, just things to make it sound good, but, like, and loud enough, but, like, not too loud because then it, like, makes crackling noises on a sound system, and it's, like... Shit is hard, okay? So appreciate it. <laughs> um, all right, another one from Sour Bones. The creative process of your music is a mystery to me. A lowly peasant. <laughs> Can you explain how you take your ideas and put them in action? Or to put it differently, what does the work process look like from idea to product? Hmm. How I take my ideas and put them to action. So my ideas for songs usually come from things either um, personal experiences a lot of the time. Uh, basically, I write songs about stuff that I feel extreme emotions about. Um, or I feel enough emotions about that I could write a song about it or something. Like, I've got to, basically, I've got to really care about something, um, to write a song about it. Like, yeah. And it's normally, you know, a personal experience or something i i've written i've written fictional songs but they were based on real feelings um i also i know that mitski does that and taylor swift does that um and i'm sure many other artists too but those ones i think i've heard like them say that they do that and i like i like love that so much because it's you can be vulnerable without being too vulnerable you know um, but yeah, I, and I usually, like, take my idea and I put it to, like, a metaphor, because I love, 
I love making songs that have like a whole theme to them. Like, like Blood Moon is like, like nighttime and it's like moon cycles and like that kind of vibe or something, an aesthetic moon something, um, something like that. Uh, and yeah, I just, I love, I love it when songs have descriptive titles, like the title gives you an image in your head, like the song title gives you a picture in your head, like it feels like it has imagery to it because like if a song is called like okay I'm gonna name a song that I like I, I love this song and I love this artist but I'm using it as an example of like a non-imagery song title so I love Sabrina Carpenter but she has some songs where the titles are this like non imagery, like basically you don't know how it could sound like at all. You don't have any kind of idea of anything. No imagery comes into your head, which I feel like that makes someone remember a song better personally. I'm not sure though, but basically, um, so I'll name some. There's like Read Your Mind. There's Things I Wish You Said. Oh, I love Things I Wish You Said. Um, there's um, Feather is a good one, but that one, that that does give you imagery because it's a, an, a thing and it's a metaphor. So, um, but yeah, there's song titles that just like say like everyday words in them. Like there's not like a noun in them or at least a unique noun or something. And so I like to have songs that have titles that are really here. Let me scroll through. Um, so <laughs> Love Me or Lose Me would be a, an example of a non imagery title um forest fire is uh imagerratic that sounds like it should be a word but i don't think it is flame that is a that gives you imagery dying at 4 a.m that gives you some imagery glass you ruined me not so much because you don't know you don't know what that is uh nexus that like feels like I can't really imagine a nexus physically, but like it feels like an interesting enough word that it gives you like a, some kind of a uniqueness. I don't know. Then there's boys. Boys is underrated. How do some of my songs on 4AM Diary on YouTube have like hundreds of views and then like other one, like boys has nine views. That's, that's a hit in my opinion, um, because boys suck, but I feel like boys were, I feel like I'm not gonna have any fan. <laughs> I feel like I'm not gonna have anyone listen to my music who is male now, because they're gonna be like, <laughs> Mars hates men. So <laughs> it's like, listen, just listen to the song, okay? Like there's a lyric, Good boys are diamonds, so hard to find, but they exist, okay? They exist. Um, yeah, The Last Garden, very much imagery there. I Still Love You is not an imagery example because you don't really get a picture in your head from that. Um, or you might, but you're less likely to. Restroom gives you an image. Soil does. And the world kind of does. Not super specific, but like, you know, end of the world scenarios. Roses gives you an image. Um, smile gives you, like, you know, you know what a smile looks like. So it's something. Um, in, you imagine hotel, 
souvenir. Souvenir is one of those words that like, you know, it's, it's unique, like it's a unique word, but um, a souvenir could be like anything. So yeah, I like metaphorical titles. Um, anyway, back to the questions here. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, my creative process. Basically, come up with a metaphor for like a situation. Like how does it make you feel? Make a metaphor for that. Like, oh, someone broke up with me. I feel like I'm dying in a forest fire. Write a song about it. Write a song called Forest Fire. You have my approval, but you can't steal my song. You, you can't steal anything about that. Anyway, um, but yeah, be like, I'm burning in a forest fire. You chopped down the trees. You threw that gasoline. Rhymes. Not really. I don't know. But yeah, basically, how do you feel? How does it make you feel? And then like, come up with an analogy. That's my kind of thing for ideas. And then I explained about like how the process from writing to like chord progressions to um, production and stuff. In production, I have no idea how I come up with sounds. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it just happens. Like I just play around until I find something that sounds right. It's crazy. Um, okay, Sour Patch Stitch, another friend of mine. Hi, bestie. How do you keep the motivation to make music, do school, and have a life at the same time? Raw. Um, it's difficult, but I do it because it's what I love to do. Like, it's what makes me feel like I have a purpose in this shitty thing we call life. It feels like my purpose. And if I'm not making music, frankly, I feel like I don't have a purpose ever. That's why I kind of feel like that lately because I haven't been making music lately. I mean, I did make a song like fully a couple weeks ago and one last night, but that's besides the point. If I'm not like in the process of creating something, I feel useless. So yeah, I just find time. And I also keep my schedule a little bit open because, or at least a lot open, half open, I don't know. But you need open schedule to do things you want to do. Annika or Annika, I'm assuming it's Annika, love, uh, says, what's your inspiration for your music? And what is your favorite song you've made yet? My inspiration, well, I told you, like, personal experiences, fictional experiences, um, stories that I make up, but, like, have the same feelings that I've had before, so I know how to describe them. Um, and then, what's my favorite song I've made? That is a hard one. It's really hard. I honestly think back to like, I don't know, something that popped in my head was Stomach Aches, which is like the second song I ever put out. But it's just like, it's just so like important to me. I don't really know why, but it's just important. It's important to me. But it's probably not my favorite favorite. Like, I want to say oh, Good Things is up there. Souvenir. Souvenir is really good. Um, the Last Garden. Demons. Nightshade. Honestly, I want to say Nightshade because it's just such a bop. And it's also my most popular song, I think, on Spotify. And it's been that way for, like, a while. 
but it's a bop, you know? It's... And the fact that I released it close to Valentine's Day, that's even better. That's almost even more girl boss of me. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna say Nightshade. And it's also just, ugh, it's just so good. Um, what do you think of your fans? By also by Annika Love. Well, it's in the name. Mars loves you. That's not only a Lana Del Rey reference, but it's also me saying that I love you. It's just the truth. Um, I thought that was a great artist name because like, you know, obviously I'm not famous or anything. I don't have an inkling of fame, but you know, I'm going to be optimistic and say when I do and not if I do have a lot more fans one day and have an inkling of fame, then it's a great art artist name because I can just say, I'm like, I just imagine myself walking out onto a stage or something and saying, hi, I'm Mars and I love you. Would that be cringe? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> Would that be cringe? I think so, but it would be funny. <laughs> what do you think of your fans, though? I, well, I love you guys. Um, I feel like mostly it's just friends and family at this point. If you're not a friend or family and you like my music, comment below and um, say hi. Um... So yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna move this over <laughs> so I can see the rest of the comments here. Um, we're reaching the end, kind of, I think. Uh, okay, next, by Sour Bones. When you said it was very hard, how hard was it? And did you know that the, that salad is three times heavier than the weight of certain things? I don't know what I said in this this ask me questions video that was very hard. I'm just gonna assume I was talking about like making music or something or like balancing work in school or something. It's difficult. I'm not sure. Sour Bones is my friend though. So hey bestie, if you want if you want to, like, if you want to tell me what you actually meant by that <laughs> or what I said, because I don't want to look through this dumbass six minute and 40, 50, 50, four second video for whatever I said. Sorry, but yeah, you can, you can tell me or ask rather, but, um, I did not know that salad is three times heavier than the weight of certain things. I, I didn't know that. And then Annika Love, again, what do you see your future? What do you see future you doing? So here's the thing, here's the part where I go all cringe and say, I've got a dream. I've got a dream. And my dream is to make music as a singer songwriter and be like i want to be like mitski i want to be like conan gray i want to be like olivia rodrigo i want to be like uh, melanie martinez i want to be like lana del rey even um taylor swift maybe but like that kind of insane like you're a household name kind of fame would stress me out but like I want to be an indie artist and like oh like it's just it's just a dream of mine like I seriously cannot I cannot stress it enough that I cannot 
see myself doing any other career or anything else in my life and being happy. Like, I seriously, like, it's the most cringe shit I've ever said, but, like, I feel like I was put on this earth to make fucking music and be happy about it. <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna try to do. That's what I'm going to college for, which is actually happening in like 15 days. Can we talk about that? I might make a YouTube video like showing around my dorm or something. Um, if you want that, comment below. If you want college vlogs, it'd be interesting. Um, and if you want me to post more in TikTok, <laughs> I'll do it. Just tell me, um, if you want me to, cause I don't know. I just have imposter syndrome with everything. Um, and I like comment. I am, I like compliments, but it's hard for me to accept compliments. And those two things do not mesh. So I don't know what to do about that, but I'm just gonna say, I'd rather you compliment me than not compliment me. Or I'd rather you compliment me rather than insult me. <laughs> so yeah, compliment me today and you'll get, you'll, it's, it statistically makes you 17% uh, uh, more attractive. It's just facts, it's science, um, definitely. But yeah, anyway, this this video is gonna be like 30, 32 minutes now. Um, it's gonna take forever to upload, but I feel like this was a good chat, even though I'm literally just staring at my phone, nodding my head to nobody, and it's 10.26 p.m on a Thursday. I didn't have therapy today. My therapist was out of town. Okay, that's random. That's unimportant. But yes, we are done with the questions. If you want to ask any more questions, um, I mean, I probably won't be doing another Q&A for like however long. I don't know. Part of me wants to do it on a live stream, but like, I feel like nobody would come to it. So yeah, I'm just like traumatized from Instagram lives where like nobody joins and I would just sit there forever because I had a dream of being liked. But yeah, so if you want to ask more questions, I probably won't make a video for that in a while, but you can just comment on like any of my social medias. Um, and I'll probably reply because once again, I don't have an inkling of fame. So I'm gonna read your comment if you comment but don't take that opportunity to make fun of me because I will delete your comment and or cuss you out. So, just quirky things. Anyway, yeah, ask any more questions you want. I won't respond with a video or maybe I will on TikTok because you can do that easily. Like you can just reply to a question with a video. But yeah, just do that. I'll, res I'll respond, ask me all the questions you want. I am happy to answer anything. So um, I hope you uh, enjoyed this um, to some degree. If you watch this whole thing, thank you. Like uh, that's crazy that you care enough to listen to me ramble about my my silly little passions, my silly little dreams. Um, 
in my music. So, um, stream class of 2023 and Blood Moon. Still deciding whether to put class of 2023 on my next album or let it just be by itself forever. I'm still not sure, but I'll figure it out. <laughs> you'll, you'll know eventually. And if you want me to post more covers, I should probably do that because that would be a good way to uh, reach more people, maybe. And I could also just, you know, sing your favorite songs if I know them, because I'm not gonna like listen to a whole song. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna just like listen to a song I know or a song I don't know a million times until I know it just because you want me to sing it. Unless it's like a really good song or something. But then you should probably just say, oh, this is a really good song. You should listen. Instead of telling me to cover it, like, if I don't know it. But I've already mentioned some artists, uh, quite a few artists that I like. So if you name a song by one of them, I will probably know it. And uh, be willing to cover it, so... Uh, this video is so long. It's going to take forever to upload because YouTube is funny. And um, so, yes, I wish you all the best in your life. Um, your... Um, endeavors. I don't know. It sounds like I'm saying goodbye forever or something. I'm not. Um, and if you made it to the end of this video and you're watching this right now, uh, comment answering one of my questions. And my question is, did you graduate class of 2023? Did you graduate high school or college, whatever? Or how close are you? What class are you basically? Um, and reply that in the comments if you're watching this right now and I'll know you're a real one. Thanks so much and um, goodbye.